Welcome back. You're watching to this point. The decision by the anti-terror court in Rawal Pindi to grant bail to Zaki Urumhan Lakhvi has come as a root shock not just to India, but the United Kingdom as well as the United States. Just 48 hours after the terrible terror attack in Peshawar and Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's promise not to distinguish between good and bad terror, this bail, if it goes ahead, raises serious doubts about Pakistan and its leadership. The key questions now are, first, could bail have been granted to Lakhvi without the army or ISI's nod? And second, how strongly and effectively will the Pakistan government intervene to prevent Lakhvi's release? With me is Congress MP and former Minister of State for External Affairs, Shashi Tharoor, the South Asia Bureau Chief of the Financial Times, Victor Mallet, and joining us from Islamabad, former Army General, Lieutenant General Talat Masood. Gentlemen, let me start with yesterday's grant of bail before I come to the steps the Pakistan government has announced this afternoon that they propose to take. First, Shashi Tharoor, what message has the anti-terror court in Rawalpindi sent to the world by granting Lakhvi bail on the grounds that the evidence against him is insufficient? It's a disgraceful message. It's an absolutely disgraceful message. This trial has been conducted in the most desultory fashion with absolutely no seriousness on the part of the Pakistan government to prosecute this individual. Uh, he has also had the, the extraordinarily lightest possible conditions of incarceration during which he has even fathered a child. He has been known to be contacting his followers on cell phones. Uh, for all we know, he has continued being the effective operational chief of the lashkar e a while supposedly in jail. And the, the prosecutors have come and gone. Some have retired. One has died. Judges have been changed. There seems to have been no desire on the part of anyone associated with the process to bring this trial to a conclusion and a conviction. Now, for them now to take the stand, uh, and particularly a day after 145 innocent people, including 132 children, were killed in Peshawar, is, uh, to put it mildly, toned uh, deafness of the most atrocious kind. Uh, a government essentially saying that as far as they're concerned, uh, they are indifferent or apathetic to uh, letting one kind of terrorist out on, on the rampage okay. while proclaiming their determination to stamp out the other kind. And to my mind, this has always been the fundamental problem with Pakistan's attitude to terrorism. They really seem to act as if a terrorist who goes off and kills Indians is in a different category from a terrorist who goes off and kills Pakistanis, particularly those in uniform or related to them. That now, really has to stop. And okay. the signal they have sent is that it hasn't stopped yet. Victor Mallet, given the nature of Pakistan, and secondly, given the way the army and the ISI exercise control over a detention of alleged terrorists, could this bail have been approved without either the army or the ISI giving some sort of nod? I think it's hard to say, but um, one way of looking at it is to recall how uh, lawyers and the justice system have behaved in the past. I, 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 my thoughts immediately went back to um, I think it was 2010 or a few years ago when Salman Tasir, the governor of Punjab, was assassinated um, essentially for having uh, tried to change the blasphemy law and, and I think defend the interests of a Christian woman who'd been accused under, the, under this law. Uh, and in the court, um, the lawyers in the court cheered the man who, who assassinated him, who murdered him, uh, and then showered him with rose petals. Uh, and this sort of tells you that it, it, in a way it doesn't... Um, uh, you know that the, the legal system on its own might might behave in strange ways, just as the just as the government and just as the armed forces um, also have um, rather curious agendas. And, and in a way, it's it's part of the sort of distortion, I think, of, of many parts of um, Pakistani society as a result of, of uh, the Islamization of, of the country ever since the days of Zia ul Haq. General Masood, many people, both in Pakistan and abroad, believe that the deep state which is how many people refer to both the army and the ISI, that this deep state would inevitably have to have been involved in the grant of bail. How can you convince the world outside that this is not the case? Well, uh, I'm not sure whether they were involved because I have a feeling that, uh, you know, the judge got scared. And uh, uh, what happened was that because of uh, this incident, this horrific incident that took place, uh, most of the lawyers and everyone was absent. And I think they took advantage of that. And this court uh, decided to give him uh, this bail. 
And I think it is extremely disappointing, and it's not only India, but I think there is also a huge disappointment within Pakistan. And it's a they are in a state of shock because it's sending a very wrong message, not only to India, but to the rest of the world and including Pakistan. So I think we have to understand that there is also a growing uh, sort of feeling in Pakistan that you cannot possibly uh, treat uh, people differently. And I'm certain that uh, this will be reversed. Well, I can't be 100% certain, but most probably uh, it will be reversed. This pro and uh, the government has already said that they are going to appeal. Uh, and uh, most probably the appeal will be upheld. Let's come then, Shashi Tharoor, to the steps that Pakistan government announced that it intends to take. It said this afternoon that it will appeal to the Supreme Court against this grant of bail. And secondly, it said that it will continue to detain this man for a further three months because he's now also been arrested under the maintenance of public order. Ajit Doval, our NSA, this afternoon has commented on that as a positive step. Do you believe it's a positive step or are you going to fall slightly short of that commendation? It's a positive step, but of course the uh, outcome is what really matters to us. Uh, it's certainly a positive step in the sense that it does suggest that there may be some truth uh, to the view that the Pakistan government has been uh, offering, that it really was unaware of the, of the impending release of Mr. Lakhvi on bail, uh, that the lawyers were on strike yesterday in protest against Peshawar, and therefore the government lawyer was absent when the judge considered the case advanced by the prosecutor, by, by, the, by the defense lawyer. Be that as it may, and obviously it sounds very specious uh, uh, to Indian ears, but if indeed they have now decided they're going to appeal this and they are going to actually assure the world they will appeal it and get it reversed, uh, we will applaud it finally only when the outcome is indeed what it is. Because even allowing this man out, and that too on a very small, modest amount of bail, uh, will guarantee that he will disappear from the uh, clutches of justice. And we have been clamoring for six years now that justice must be done, that the perpetrators of the murder of 166 okay. people in Mumbai on 2611 must be apprehended along with their fellow conspirators and accomplices. The Pakistanis acted under international pressure to arrest Lakhvi and six others. But the fact that they've taken no steps really to bring this to a conviction suggests that they really, the heart isn't really in it. Now after Peshawar, will their attitude change? Will they be more serious? Will they stick to the words of Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif that there is no good Taliban okay. and no bad Taliban? Or will they draw a distinction and say there are good terrorists and bad terrorists? Victor Mallet, as you said a moment ago, the judicial system and perhaps lawyers in Pakistan in particular can act and behave in very strange ways. If ultimately Lakhvi is released on bail, what message will that send to the world? Oh, I mean, I, I, I can't disagree with, with the other interviewees. It would send an appalling message to the world. I mean, I think, uh, you know, public opinion is, is very important. And, and what everybody, I think, hopes for, everyone outside Pakistan, and I think a lot of people inside Pakistan, is that there is a sort of general uprising of, of the public saying this is no longer acceptable. We all know that 90% of the people in Pakistan, as numerous surveys have shown, oppose the Taliban. They oppose everything they stand for. And, and indeed, when uh, Malala was, was shot um, a few years back and nearly killed by the Taliban, there were public demonstrations. Uh, and it will be interesting to see whether there are public demonstrations again against the Taliban and in favor of modernity, education and, and a sort of rational tolerant society. The trouble is um, there is the fear element which, which is clearly influenced a lot of decisions by, by politicians, by the legal system and so on that, that makes it very hard for, for people to take those brave stands, especially people in public office who are constantly threatened with, with assassination. Um, but I think what the world would like to see is a sort of mass uprising of the Pakistani people saying we no longer accept this, uh, in, including among Pashtuns in, in, in the Northwest, saying we don't accept this, this is not the way to run a sensible society. We want our children to go to school, we want them to be educated, and we want peace. But, you know, I'm afraid I'm not optimistic that that's what will happen, but that's what should happen. General Basul, I know that yesterday there was an immediate Twitter hashtag in Pakistan expressing support for India and outrage at the fact that Lakhvi has been given bail and clearly therefore to that extent it suggests that the sentiments of the Pakistani people are with India in trying to understand what's happened and not with 
Lakvi or the Taliban. But you also pointed out that it's quite possible that the judge concerned was simply scared. He came under pressure. What are the chances that the rest of your judiciary would be equally scared? Because remember, the, the judge who convicted the Seer's killer had to leave the country. Is your judiciary going to stand up and make sure that the right message from Pakistan goes out to the world? Or will it act in fear and give the man bail? You know, this is a very key point that you have raised. And uh, this is the unfortunate uh, aspect of the whole, uh, you know, th what is happening in Pakistan is that whenever anyone takes a hard position against these militants, his life becomes uh, very risky and uh, he's uh, inevitably sort of uh, shot. And as you know, uh, one of the lawyers, uh, prosecution lawyers, uh, uh, of, uh, in this case was shot dead in the past. And so everyone is very scared. And that is, uh, the problem is that the state is very weak. The state is unable to give protection either to, uh, uh, you know, the witnesses or to the, uh, the prosecutor or uh, to the judges. And that is the whole trouble. Okay. And, and uh, that is why I think it is so important today that uh, all the political parties and the entire country should be united against them so that uh, then it becomes very difficult for them to sort of uh, take uh, this individual shots at these people so that uh, you, you know there is a wave of uh, resentment though uh, and we have to see how the government and the leaders are able to mobilize all this okay. and what is the role of the military and the intelligence agencies i want to ask each of you to give me slightly shorter brief answers because we're getting to the end of this episode and we're running out of time Shashi Thru, to what extent do we in india need to be not perhaps sympathetic, but understanding of the fear that grips the Pakistan judiciary and the actual threat to their lives if they convict Taliban or LET operatives, and therefore understand what happens in the light of that fear. To what extent do we need to be understanding, and to what extent should we say to them, look, this is your problem, not ours, don't find excuses? Well, it's, it's, it's both, uh, Karan. We do have to be understanding because human beings are intimidatable and uh, they have been. But at the same time, you know, if Pakistan wants to be taken seriously as a state, as an interlocutor of ours in discussing the future of our relations on the subcontinent, then they have to take their responsibilities as a state. The problem we have is that we're expecting the very people to convict Mr. Lakhvi, who have in fact at various stages sponsored him in his operations, trained him, financed him, equipped him and guided him. And the difficulty therefore is going back to Victor Mallet's point. If we can, and General Talat Masood has said the same thing, if we can actually encourage the space for the moderate and democratic forces who really are a majority to be larger by giving them more understanding and support we might be able to strengthen their hands against a very small but very well armed minority who are the extremists i have suggested in a column today that we should actually liberalize our people to people contact with pakistan our visa policy to pakistan and so on while isolating the government and the institutions that continue to harbor and encourage terrorism i think if we can bifurcate our policy instead of reacting to terrorist attacks by punishing the wrong people and suspending visas and so on, okay. if we can actually open up the space to ordinary Pakistanis and crack down on the official establishment and the deep state, then I think we might have a different policy from the one we've followed for many years. Victor Malik, there was a thought there in Shashi's answer at the beginning that I want to put to you. Is it realistic to expect the very system that nurtured Lakhvi to now do a U-turn and convict him? But a quick answer, please. I, I, I think... I, I think for pragmatic reasons, I think for pragmatic reasons that might happen, yes. But the fundamental problem is the one of the state and the establishment. Uh, and it's because Pakistan is not a secular state, it's the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. And this is where the problem ultimately lies, I think. You, first of all, um, a state formatted in that way has to almost by definition begin persecuting or discriminating against non-Muslims. Uh, so we've seen, you know, uh, Ahmadis, uh, uh, Christians and Hindus all suffering. And then, having, having done that, it then says, okay, so we're an Islamic state, what kind of Islamic state are we? Um, and then you, have to, then you have disputes between different factions of Islam. Uh, and, and, you know, so you're saying, who's the right kind of Muslim? And of course, everybody who claims to be purer than the rest feels they have a sort of a moral and ideological advantage. And, and this is the, I think, the, the confusion, and this is why the state is weak, and why everyone okay. is afraid, and, and why it's so difficult to, to set up a sort of 
a strong state that will simply apply the law and apply justice and apply common sense. General Basu, do people in Pakistan, I don't just mean the government, the army and the judiciary, but does the public opinion of our country realize that this is a litmus test of Pakistan's credibility? And more than that, it's going to be a litmus test of the sort of relationship you have with India, because if Lakhvi walks out on bail, the relationship between the two countries will deteriorate markedly and sharply. Absolutely. I think it's a very fundamental issue that you are touching. And uh, Pakistani people, by and large, understand all this. It's really the poor leadership, I think, uh, which is preventing Pakistan to really take it in the right direction. And uh, there are multiple problems. And uh, there is a state of ideological confusion. And uh, there are forces which are very strong, which are very co highly conservative, outdated, and they have such views uh, which will always sort of protect guys like uh, Lakhvi. But the fact is that there is also a growing resentment against them. And people are just not prepared to accept. And even there is so much of fear among certain political parties like uh, Tehrik and Saf and all, which did not take a clear position despite the fact that we were expecting them to do so. And uh, now, of course, uh, you know, reluctantly or they were forced after this event to take a position, uh, uh, you know, th against all these militants. But we have to see whether they still differentiate between militants and they uh, do realize that what consequences would follow if they would not, uh, if they would continue to differentiate. All right, gentlemen, my thanks to all three of you for joining me for this discussion. There we end this particular episode. If you have been, thanks for watching. I'm going to say goodbye and good night.